Rep's quick draw adjustable dumbbells have been touted as the most durable, fastest adjusting dumbbells on the market, and they've been hyped up pretty high by those that were fortunate enough to get an early version, but these are the production model, and I've completely tore them down and put them through hell to see if they live up to all the claims. And I think there's a lot to like, but I've also got some criticisms as well. Rep's dumbbells are pretty well balanced and for the most part feel and function like a fixed dumbbell. They have a mostly steel construction, which is where their advertised durability comes from, and they're backing it with a lifetime warranty. But that warranty doesn't really cover drops, which makes sense. You can't have some idiot online yeeting them off stuff for views, but it also makes me wonder just how durable they are. Well, luckily I'm that idiot online and since Rep sent me these for the review, I'm dumb enough to try to break them to see if they're any good. Unfortunately, I did buy a lot of the dumbbells we're about to talk about, so if you enjoy watching me be me or decide this video was helpful, then please use our affiliate links as that's how we fund this train wreck of a channel. We're gonna go pretty heavy with the comparisons in this review because if you're picking a set of adjustable dumbbells, it helps to know your options and how they stack up. So I brought my Newabells Snowed 8080s and then I kind of ran out of room up here, but we've got quite a few others that we're gonna talk about. But the first thing you might have noticed is the quick draw size because at 60 pounds, they're as long as the 8080s and Newabells at 80 pounds and about as long as a 100 pound fixed dumbbell. Now, does that extra length matter? <laughs> Normally I'd say yes, but they're quite a bit shorter than your average loadable dumbbell handle, which is where that length can become problematic during curls or pressing movements. But with the quick draws, I don't really notice, and the quick draws are actually smaller than Snowed and Newabells and even a fixed dumbbell until about 30 pounds or so. The handle is about the same length as a fixed dumbbell. Technically, it's a little bit longer, but I'm talking about the usable length because the plate mounts take up some space here. With the add-on weights, it's about five inches long, which is still wide enough, but not so long that they can affect balance like Iron Master's Quick Locks at six and three quarter inches long. They also have a 32 millimeter diameter, which is a little smaller than your typical fixed dumbbell, but identical to Newabell and Iron Master. Combine those specs with a straight, fully knurled handle, and it is a clean and well done volcano knurl, though maybe some people would find it a little bit passive, but they feel natural to use once you get over the movement in the plates. More on that in a minute, but they're well balanced and unlike Snowed or Newabell, you don't actually need the cradle to change the weights. All it does is hold them in place. So just like with power blocks, you can do drop sets without returning to the cradle and even load them back up. And unlike power blocks, these don't feel caged in. That size difference as they get heavier is why these only go up to 60 pounds. You can buy them at 30, 40, 50, or 60 pounds, and if you get a smaller set, you can buy pairs of add-on plates later to expand it. This length does show the limitations of the design, and it's why Rep is coming out with a different set of adjustables that'll go up to 120 pounds, which we'll definitely review, so subscribe so you don't miss it. You'll notice, though, that these plates are modular, so there's nothing stopping you from adding a few more on. The only limitation is your own stupidity. Well, that and the warranty, which I voided a long time ago. So nothing stopping me from making a completely usable, in no way flawed, 110 pound dumbbell. It also shows off the slack between the plates. Granted, it's much less dramatic when you use them properly, but there is a noticeable amount of movement when you pick them up and sometimes when you're getting them into position. Does it affect performance and balance? No, not really. And all of these have some jiggle in their wiggle because there has to be some type of play, some amount of play between the components or every time you line them up, you'd have to be incredibly precise. So it's a balancing act. Is this an acceptable amount? I think once you're used to it, yes, but the first few times it'll probably grab your attention though. Honestly, after a bit, I don't really notice anymore. And I'm pretty confident in these things because of how they're put together, which brings us to the teardown. And I pulled all of these apart because 
it's hard to gauge durability without really knowing what's going on. I also have a healthy distrust of corporations because they're always going to put themselves in the best light to make sales. They kind of have to. And I'm not saying Rep is some evil overlord, but do you think they're pushing those videos if their stuff breaks? So when they say almost all steel construction, I want to know what that means. Now, by just looking at these, you'll get a pretty good idea, but my mom always said it's what's inside that counts, and I think this is what she was talking about. So I've pulled them all apart to show you what I mean. The actual plates on these things are cast iron with plastic dovetail joints bolted on, and having the joint plastic is okay because they'll absorb some shock and make them a little bit cheaper to produce. If it were to break, they've reinforced the tip with metal so the plate can't come flying out. The two support rods, which is similar to what Pepin is doing with their adjustable dumbbells to increase durability, those are metal, just like the handle, and the center section, for the most part, is. The inside plate is, but the outside is plastic. As are the dovetails, which kind of have to be to keep the weight down so their lowest increment is 5 pounds, unlike Snowd's, where they start at 10 pounds. And you'll also notice the housing for the switches on the plates are plastic but the internals, which is what really matters, is metal. The mechanism for the spring-loaded switches, which Rep calls their lock and load switches, are entirely metal. The spring, lever, rod, everything. That's important because it's what keeps those plates locked in, and that hard click gives me confidence I'm going to keep my teeth during each set. I also bring it up because Snowd advertises their dumbbells as the most durable adjustable dumbbells and says they're drop proof up to 32 inches. And they are pretty tough because the majority of the build, including the joint, is iron. So you're not really worried about that part breaking, but some of the internals, including the gears, are plastic. So while they're not really taking hard shots in a drop, Rep is still going to be much more durable. And while Snowd will sell you replacement parts, I'll tell you right now, it's not a whole lot of fun putting this thing back together. And if a switch or something breaks on the quick draws, you can just replace the plate. As for actually using these and swapping the weights, it's pretty straight and simple once you get used to it, but I'll be damned if the first few times I didn't question my intelligence as I did some abacus math trying to figure it out. Now some of that's because the black numbering on the black cradle is a little difficult to see, so as you can tell I started upgrading them with a paint pen, and it does look pretty good if you squint from like 10 feet away, but I've got the attention span of a six month old, so I haven't finished it yet, but I'll gladly challenge you to use my affiliate link for the pen and the dumbbells to see if you can do better. Now these are adjustable in five pound increments with the add-on plates and technically two and a half pounds if you don't mind a little imbalance or maybe you want them offset for something like supinated curls, but allow me to demonstrate how it all works. If you're not using the add-on plates, you read the top line. So if all my switches are up, you've got five, flip the switches for 15, 25, and so on. If I'm using the add-on plates, which are easy enough to install, I then read the bottom line. So 30 pounds, 40 pounds, and you get the idea. It's easy and quick after you've done it a few times, especially when compared to something like Iron Master's Quick Lock adjustable dumbbells, which kind of function like a loadable dumbbell handle. That being said, the quick draws aren't as simple as the newer bells, which probably have the coolest and most convenient switching system, but I've got two problems with these. One, you've got to have pretty good wrist endurance if you're adjusting these a lot. So if you're a monster like Winnie, who's maxing these things out on Bulgarian split squats, and then I go to set it up at five pounds for my set, it takes a while. Two, do you know what holds this head plate on? Four little screws that go about five-eighths of an inch into this plastic. Sure, the plastic joints and aluminum rod that extend out help to reinforce things, but a lot of the internals of this are plastic, and I have a real hard time recommending these for how delicate they are at $800. Now, don't mistake that for me saying you should drop your equipment, but accidents happen, and if you tweak something during a lift, the last thing I want to worry about are my dumbbells. 
So where does that leave these overall? I take their durability over Nubel's, even if they don't go as high in weight, and that's a problem for some people. But for a lot of people, 60 pounds is great. And I know I'm gonna hear it in the comments, but not every single piece of equipment is designed for you. And that's okay, I'll still be here for you when they drop those 120s. I also like the Quick Draw's weight increments over Snode's 10 pound jumps. And I know Snode has magnetic weight plates, but these quick draws already work as is. That's not to say all the options we talked about don't have their own advantages or things I like about them, but I think these are priced pretty well. Sure, they're imported, but they're well-made, have a higher builds quality than a lot of other options, and they should last just about forever in your home gym, and it's an easy fix if something were to happen to them. The packaging is exceptional. I haven't had any real issues with the support rods getting in the way, and and you could even use them for handles for certain movements. Do I think they could tighten up the tolerances on these plates and paint the weight indications? Yeah, but am I happy with them as is? Yeah, I think they're overall well done, but let me know what you think. Did I miss anything? Are there any other adjustable dumbbells you want us to review? Or Maybe you just like when I tear things down and destroy things. Let me know. Thanks to our Patreons, links in the description. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.